Hi, on the next show of The Truth Project, I'm going to continue exposing and pulling apart some of the practices that are of demons and devils that have been planned for this time. So stay tuned. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi, welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. And as I said before, I'm enjoying this whole session to be able to discuss, expose, but also give you freedom from some of these practices that are new age or have been deceptive practices in your life. I already did yoga and the Eastern meditation on the last session. I want to move to another one. And this one's a, a controversial one. So let me, I'll tell you what it is and then I'll explain it from there. Um, Eastern health practices or Eastern health medicines and practices. There's lots of them out there. And it doesn't mean that everything is wrong just because it's, it's healthy. But there are some practices that have been designed in a way that aren't necessarily good for you. Now, I understand that God, first of all, God created everything. He created the earth. He created the herbs. He created, you know, food, everything else for us. He created our bodies that we can, with our immune system, solve things and get healed and do all sorts of stuff. It's amazing how God created us. But Eastern health practices, I'm talking about the ones, and they do exist, that where you can go to certain places and get Chinese herbs or other herbs and other things to, for different stuff, and it can be anything, anything from a cold to severe to cancer, whatever. I am totally someone that believes in eating right, being right, and even using God's food and God's herbs and things for healing. In fact, I went through a very... Um, uh, desperate sickness many, many years ago. And the interesting thing was, is that when I, I discovered how could I not only pray, and it needed prayer as well for healing, but at the same time, this part of my body also needed um, other things because it was to do with my whole digestive system and pancreas and all those types of things and liver. And the interesting thing is that God showed me cabbage. Now, I'm not telling you on this show to go and get cabbage, but what I did is I actually used cabbage and I would juice it once a day raw. It's rough to drink. But I felt the Lord had let me do that. I did that every day. I believe that helped in the healing. And yes, there was a time that someone prayed for me supernaturally. See, I couldn't eat anything. Whenever I would eat, the pain would be horrific. I couldn't eat. I was mainly liquids and other stuff. The day that someone prayed for me, I actually went out and had a hamburger and I was the happiest man on the planet. Nothing hurt. Everything was healed. But it wasn't, I know it wasn't just prayer. It was God had got my body ready with things that he has made and has um, healing qualities in it. So I understand that. But I think what we need to do is learn how to discern. We need to learn how to discern spirits. Now, how do I do that? If there's alternative medicines and alternative practices, if I don't know about them, the very first thing I'm going to do is pray. I'm going to ask the Lord to give me discernment. Now, discernment's not that my belly feels good or my, you know, and I, or my, um, the rest of my bowel system feels good. That's not discernment. Discernment is in your spirit. It's not in your soul. It's not in your emotions. It's not in your head. It is in your spirit. So you need to know your spirit. You need to know who's living inside you. You need to ask questions and hear from not an emotional sense, but a spiritual sense. So I pray over everything. I pray over because I've seen, I've seen, been in that world and I know that they pray curses over certain things. I've seen idols that have been prayed over. I've seen um, um, chemicals and I've seen natural herbs all prayed over uh, and curses put on, not prayed for healing, but curses. Can we pray over things to be healed? Of course we can. Of course we can. I'm just letting you know that there's a lot out there set against you and you mainly need to know your discernment so you can understand whether to have it or not. Now, this could be an example of discernment. A friend of mine was um, going to a Chinese herbalist in the city to get all these different chemicals to solve a, a, a problem in their body. And then when they were there, it was interesting, well, as soon as they were in the place, they were feeling sick and sicker and they felt oppression when they were in this store. Now, to me, that's discernment. They're picking it up straight away. And I said, oh, that's so good that you discern that. 
So then you left the store and they went, oh no, I got the medicine and then I had that for a few years. It didn't really seem to change, it just got worse. I'm like, you didn't even act on it. So you need to act on discernment. God has built you, if you're a believer in Jesus, through your spirit to be able to know different things. Uh, another friend of mine was going to a spa and was having a massage and they started feeling ill as well and felt something was totally off. So they, I've taught a lot of the people I know to ask the people, ask them if they're channeling an energy. Are they doing something like that? There's nothing wrong with asking. You've paid probably well over $100 to get a massage. So ask them. And they asked this person and the person said, oh, yeah, I channel Reiki, which I'm going to talk about in one of these subjects in a moment. But, um, yeah, I do Reiki and I'm channeling this energy through you. So they obviously had discerned, this friend of mine. But I said, oh, great. So you left? No, no, no I'd be too embarrassed to leave. Too embarrassed to leave, but they allow a demonic energy to be channeled through you. It's, it's like we need to wake up, especially as um, believers in Jesus, and know that there's healing power in his name. There's so many miracles that I had in that 12 months to do with healings simply from prayer, just simply believing prayer. I wasn't a perfect Christian. I'd been totally doing all the other stuff for so long, for a couple of decades. But God would step in and heal. And it's like people go, but he doesn't heal for me. Well, I don't know what's happening in your life, but ask God. Ask God maybe there's certain things that need to change. And, it, and some people, seriously, it can be diet. For me, I had, to, I had to, after I was healed, I had to stop sugar and I had to stop some other things so that the sickness didn't come back. And praise God, I'm still totally healed today. And the, the interesting thing is just knowing that. That's what I'm talking about. So when I talk about Eastern health practices, learn discernment. Find that out. If you're not sure of something, sure, email me. That, I have no problem about that. Contact me via the website and I'll answer your questions. I answer all of them personally. I don't let staff to do that because they don't understand what I understand and what you're going through. So, so another thing that, that happens here, and this is an area that I was a quite strong expert in when I was in the New Age, one of the things that I did and they had me do worldwide was run personal development seminars. Besides the spiritual seminars and spiritual retreats, their aim, my guru's aim was to try and get people weaned away from their face, as I mentioned before, but get them to the point that they thought they were self through personal motivation seminars and personal development. Now, even some people that are still running them today were my friends back then. Some of them I could even call friends now, but they, we have, they just agree that we have different faiths and different ways that we do things. And the interesting thing is that when I was teaching that, what was I teaching? I was teaching them man's wisdom, but, but spiritual Hinduism mixed in with man's wisdom. And I was teaching them how to develop their life, how to personally develop, how to be more motivated. The problem with that and I'm an expert because I designed them, I taught them, and I then came to God and started to teach God's principles for people's lives personally. And there's a difference. When you do it with man's wisdom or other spirits, you're constantly having to work at it. You never reach victory, ever. You're constantly looking how to evolve and how to get better and better, and you'll go to another seminar or, or here or there. You're always going somewhere to try and develop yourself. There's nothing wrong with being a better person. But if you can do it in God, if you can find God's principles of how to, how to succeed, how to have success, how to have health, how to, to be more motivated, how to have more confidence, how to have more self-esteem, I challenge any of you. Everywhere in the Bible, I've found an answer to my personal life. Everywhere. Now, some people go, but I don't know where it is in the Bible. I didn't know either. So I simply went and bought a concordance, a simple book that has every word that's in the Bible listed in it, and it gives you the Greek meaning or the Hebrew meaning. It was very powerful for me to look up things like that. In fact, there's some of the things that I've even used in um, some of the business seminars that I said that I now run for some of the large companies. I will bring in God's wisdom. I don't use my wisdom anymore. I don't have any wisdom. I just follow God's wisdom. There is so much in the Bible. So that's a big area at the moment, getting even bigger and bigger. In fact, I'm going to prophesied that I believe that probably in the next six months to 12 months, because of what's happened around the world with the pandemic, we're going to see a lot of hungry people trying to change their lives because there's no such thing as a new normal. It's not new. It's not normal. It's bad. Some of the ways that some people are living now based on what had happened, their, their lives are a mess. There's no hope at all. I believe in the next six to 12 months that if you and if you're listening to this, I just want you to know that God has an answer. You don't have to go to the world's wisdom. You don't have to go to the next seminar. You don't have to go there. Because in this 6 to 12 months, I believe we're not only going to have a great awakening, we're going to have an awakening in the un 
saved, the people that don't know Jesus, we're actually going to have an awakening where people are going to go, I have no hope. Where will I go? I believe that God's glory is going to fall not just on believers. It's going to fall on everyone, on all spirit. The Lord said he will put his spirit on, on all people, on all people. And I believe that's going to happen because people are going to come out and think this is not normal. This is not what I wanted. What am I going to do? They're going to be hopeless. And so we need to be the ones that provide that. Now, how do we provide that if we're dealing with the same information from man and we're trying to apply man's wisdom? We can't. We have to apply God's wisdom. We need to find out what that wisdom is. I can already, I can feel it in my spirit that some of you already have been wondering, oh, what's your purpose in God? And that's going to be your purpose from this day on, is that you're going to find the truth in God's word. You're going to look at his word. You're going to find the ways to do things from his word. And God's going to start to empower you and open doors for you. Now, so not man's, man's wisdom, because man's not a creator. He, he never will be a creator. <laughs> you know, we can build things, we can do stuff, but we can't create the things that we build with. And um, I'm going to touch on this third thing before we finish, and that is this word called the universe. And it's so, so apparent. I hear it in movies. I hear it everywhere. The universe shifted or the universe did this or, you know, a couple meet each other and go, oh, the universe planned it. And I'm just like, the universe? Hang on. That's God's creation. The star didn't jump out of the sky and come down and do stuff. And, and you know, it, it gets us to go away from God. And that's not what the plan is. That's why it's a counterfeit practice. There's no such thing. There is a thing called the universe, but our God created it. And he created the stars. He created all that for us. How, how an awesome God is that, that he created it for us. And so we have to be careful that we're not following um, something and calling it the, cre you know, the, the creator. See, even back to, and I mentioned this twice before about Mother Earth, that is another big thing that's come. It is, it is the name that is called over that spirit now, Mother Earth. But basically, Mother Earth was the asterisk poles. It was the same thing that I researched back that was around in the days of Ahab and Jezebel and, and Elijah and the, the fights they had. And Baal was one of the other gods. So they're all still operating, but in a more Western weaned way throughout the centuries to get and the millennials to get to where we are today. So you do not need a universe to create something. God is your creator. That's who we need. Now, with that Mother Earth, be careful because they try to mix nature with Mother Earth as well. But if you ever study it, if you want to, you don't have to. I've got it in the book as well. And I suggest you do it that way because I've kept it as clean as I can. Because if you start Googling all these things, boy, you'd be surprised what will show up. And you really need to be careful how to discern a lot of that. But again, as I said, in the book, just go to it's on all of Amazon's around the world. It's in bookstores. It's called The Authentic Awakening, How to Dismantle the Counterfeit of the Enemy. And I want you to get it because it's a great resource. Again, even on my app, there's resources there. I want you to be able to do that so you start to move into God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. Because God's wisdom is much more powerful and you don't need to do anything. You just need to find it out, take the action and trust God. That's all you need to do to be able to do that. And when you're doing that, then you start to, as I said in the beginning of one of the first shows, about the $100 bills and the $20 bills and the $5 bills that I had in America and how they were doing this and then pulling them out, pulling the counterfeits. I'm praying that that's exactly what's going to happen to you through these shows, that you will start to learn God's power so much and His Word so much that you will be able to pick up every counterfeit and be able to leave that in the name of Jesus. We'll be back with more of The Truth Project in just one moment. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com, to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, 
Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Hi, welcome back to this section. We, um, I'm going to continue again, just bringing as much information as I can on certain topics. I've got a lot of them, so, but I just know that people wanting these things, this is where when I said that I was deceptive in the sense of the New Age trying to convince believers in Jesus to come away from Jesus, this is the stuff that we did. This is the stuff that we propagated. This is what we did. I'm not saying anything that's um, not validated or I haven't experienced myself. I knew all this was happening. Um, the, I, I mentioned this in one of the earlier shows about um, that one of the practices is that they'll do everything they can where there's no devil and there's no evil, that evil doesn't even exist. The interesting thing was when I was in the New Age, <laughs> we didn't believe in evil. A uh, funny thing to look back at now. But we didn't believe in evil at all. We didn't believe in devil, didn't believe in evil, nothing like that. It was, it was interesting, though, because I, why were the things not good on the planet? Like, why were things not changing the way we wanted it? If we, were, if we were about good, why didn't good just go everywhere? When I was in the New Age, that is. Um, I know now that it was actually the enemy was, you know, he's pushing back against um, the believers of Jesus, and he's pushing back in, this, in these end times as well. And he's not wanting people to believe in Jesus. I get that. But we thought that we were spreading good and there was no such thing as evil. So I'm going to share a little story with you that was interesting is that then when I became, a, um, you know, a, a believer in Jesus, I then went, OK, my guru turned to something I would call evil when I was talking to him and letting him know about this whole new path. And, and then he cut me off worldwide from everything. But the interesting thing was that I thought, well, what was that? So I, I asked God and I said, God, what, what is this? What, what, is there an evil? Is there not an evil? I mean, that's how brainwashed I was. I had no idea that there was even like that. We believe that people were just good and evil, kind of, and you just got to get the balance right, you know. Anyway, so, but we didn't really have that full concept of evil. What happened is that the Lord told me to watch TV, watch the news. And I was like, what? Why would I watch the news? Anyway, so I sat down and I started watching the news. And man, I was shocked. I was crying the whole time I'm seeing it. The things they were reporting on, I had, I had isolated myself. I wasn't around that, that stuff when I was a leader in the New Age. And here I'm, here I'm watching people killing unborn babies and, and murders. And this, like it was horrific. It was hard to even watch. And then the Lord said, yeah, see, that's not me. That's not my heart. What there is, is this evil. And then he started showing me that there actually was a plan, what had happened and what Satan did and everything else. And I'm going to describe a little bit of that probably again in another show. I always try to tease you a little bit into another show, but um, I will get to that. But the interesting thing is I didn't believe in a devil and evil. And then when I started reading, even Jesus was talking about it and warned us. Paul warned us. So many people did. But let me come back to another, another practice here. And <laughs> Sorry, I think this is funny. Good witches or white witches. I have no idea what that is. I'm wondering if Christians made that up. I don't know. I've, I've never heard of that. A, a, a warlock was a warlock. A witch was a witch when I was in the New Age. Um, the things that we practiced and that we did seances, we contacted the dead, I, you know, people channeled people, all that witchcraft stuff we did. Um, we, didn't walk, it's funny, we didn't walk around going, oh, but they're just a good witch. I was like, no, 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 they weren't good. And so it's interesting when I started hearing people go, oh, no, I'm a good witch. And I go, what's a good witch? And then TV shows, good witch. It's like, what's a good witch? You're a witch. And it's like, oh, no, but I only do nice spells. What do you mean you only do nice spells? It's like it didn't fit for me because I knew my background and I knew what I was into. And then white witch, I thought that was a good one, white. Why are they trying to make her look holier because she's white? Look, I'm just going to let you know, a witch is a witch and a warlock's a warlock and they have curses and they do what they do. However, we have authority over them. Jesus, when he died, gave us authority over the gates of hell. So we can actually have authority. And you too, you all have authority over that. 
Then the next thing that came off that, um, that we were probably able to say, therefore, there's no demons. There's no demons running around and doing any work. That's bad. So if they don't exist, then think about how lost we would be as believers in Jesus if there actually were no demons anywhere. We'd have to be accountable for our stuff. We'd have to be accountable for our life and what we did. I mean, in one way, I understand Eden and the Garden of Eden. But since man has fallen, we're in that position now where um, they exist. Things happen in life. Um, the enemy doesn't like us. Once you become a believer in Jesus, the enemy pushes. Now, he can't win and he just bluffs most of the time. And he can't really do anything to us because unless we turn around and give him authority, we can. And that's why I'm trying to expose as much as I can so that you don't, by deceitfully from someone else, fall into a trap where you actually open up to a practice that's from the devil. But um, there's another thing that then comes from the fact of that with the demons and everything else. That's that's another very big thing in the new age, and that is energies. Um, When I became a believer in Jesus, I found out about the Holy Spirit. And I found out that the Holy Spirit, he was part of the Trinity. And I found out that he was part of God. He was God in himself. So I also found out that he's not a wind in the sense that he's a floating through the sky like a new age stuff, but he was real. And that I could ask him to lead me, as I said in that scripture earlier today in the shows, about how we actually can be led by the spirit of truth. And the interesting thing is that the counterfeit of that and the new age practices that you need to be aware of is a thing called false energies. That's what I'm calling them. They're false because they're not real. They're actually false. And I'm going to name some of them for you. But basically, there's hundreds of them. That's one thing the new age will do. And even Hinduism, Buddhism, they love naming everything and everything. There's like over 300 gods and there's this and there's that. They just have so many of everything that it gets too confusing. But um, these false energies, I mentioned one before on the last show, which was Kundalini, which is a serpent spirit. And you definitely don't want to have anything to do with that. That's the thing that causes possession, all sorts of different things and stuff. I've even met gurus in India that do, how would I describe it? They get to a point they feel they're so evolved that they feel like the next lifetime they will become a spiritual teacher or avatar in the heavenlies or the spiritual realms. And so this lifetime, they actually will stay in one position, in a lotus position, and people feed them and bathe them and do other things that need to be done on a daily routine. And that's just it. They just, again, do the Eastern meditation and they're channeling energies to be able to move into the next realm or whatever that might be. It's all deception. It's very sad to watch. In fact, there's a gentleman by, um, oh, I forget his last name. I'll try and remember this one of the other shows, but he wrote a book called The Death of a Guru. He grew up with his father as a guru, but one of those gurus that would sit cross-legged, he'd been in cross-legged for decades to the point that his bones had even um, um, grafted together in such demonic dedication to the, to the gods, uh, the Hindu gods. And then he, this son, though, he um, was told by his grandmother that if he's ever in danger, call out the name Jesus. Don't call out Brahman or any of the others. The other interesting thing is that that he was uh, like a cobra spirit snake came after him. And when it came after him, he remembered his grandmother and he just said straight away, in Jesus' name, and the the cobra took off, didn't attack him or do anything. It was already sprung up, ready to attack. And it was from that day he started to inquire, similar to what I did, started to inquire about things, find out where is there a veil or is there other things that's making a deception here? What is it? Anyway, he ended up um, becoming a believer in Jesus and um, when he saw what was happening to his father. And as a believer, he um, continued to go around the world. I actually brought him into Australia and we, we did um, uh, a lot of seminars together. We're basically talking about the deception and backing up what I had said as well. So we would back up each other. But the interesting thing is the false energies. And he would talk about that as well. He now works. This is interesting. He now works in Europe with LSD patients and cocaine patients, or like heavy drug, heavy prescribed drugs uh, patients. And you think, why is he doing that? It's because he found out their experiences in those demonic realms was exactly the same as his was when he was chanting or trying to be, a, you know, become a new guru. The same thing. So he's able to help and relate to those um, people in that situation. But let me name some of them, just some of them in the sense of false energies. One of them is a practice called raking. It's quite common. I've even known Christians that have done it. It is definitely the counterfeit of laying on of hands, but it is the counterfeit of that, meaning that they channel symbols and energies from 
who knows what spirits, most of them are demonic spirits if you get look up their names, I'm channeling that energy into people and people go away and they will do a master's course, a master master's course and then a full trainer instructor course to be able to learn how to channel these energies. Now, these energies are not the Holy Spirit. They're not energies connected to God. They're connected to Satan. They're connected to demons and doctrines of demons. You do not want them channeling that energy through you. So you need to discern, as I mentioned before. The other energy that is often talked about is the chi. Now, the, when I very quickly, when I went through the history, this is when I found out that these uh, gods of the Old Testament, from the asterisk poles to Baal to to some of the Asterate as well as another one, they actually, as their names started to change and come forward, that they, they would pass through an area of Asia and then the names would even change again and, and then come directly into the West. And that was in, uh, so let me just talk about this, the Qi Force. It's a very common thing. It's mainly Chinese. You might have heard it in the word of Tai Chi, where they do Tai Chi with it. And um, someone asked me the other day, can you do Tai Chi? I've stopped yoga, but, but can I do Tai Chi? No, it's exactly the same thing. You're using that same energy. The positions are provoking that energy into you. are giving them permission. You might not be telling them and you might be thinking you're thinking on Jesus, but you're not. You're actually opening it up to them, allowing them to come in. Um, the other one is the, there's the key and that's with, a, that's with a Q and an I. There's the Chi. Reiki uses it. Then I'll just come to this one. And this is... Um, uh, yeah, okay. yin yang. It's an interesting thing. It's where false energies can be involved. The basic principle of yin yang, a lot of you have probably even seen the symbols, but the basic principle of yin yang is that they believe in the new age, they believe, and in Hinduism, even Buddhism, Taoism, that we as a human being have um, good and evil. We have good and evil. And the whole thing of yin yang and the purpose of it is to balance those two energies in our body. They believe if you're out of balance one way or the other, too much male, too much female, that we will get sick and out of aligned. So we're diseased, we're out of balance. The interesting thing about yin yang is that, first of all, it's talking about energies. And the second thing that it's talking about is affecting your body. Now, when I became a believer in Jesus, I followed the Holy Spirit. I followed the Holy Spirit to be able to learn from him, but also to have him inside of me. I do not and you do not need to balance the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, he's enough energy. He's enough power. You do not need to balance him. So don't go anywhere near a yin yang or anything to do with a symbol or anything to do with that. It's talking about the wrong energies and it's talking about the wrong thing. And um, there's a couple more here that I'm going to talk about when we come back into uh, into the next show. We're going to talk about them, but I just need a bit more time with them. And I'm also going to, as well, just again, ask you to go to the resources. Some of the things that I've written about yoga, I've taught about yoga, I've taught about um, all these types of things. You'll get more information on the website or even downloading the app. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.